Uh, good to see you all here. And uh, some of you who didn't see me earlier in the day, I was here giving the platform engineering uh, working group updates. Uh, so now I'd be talking about, are you really ready to adopt a platform? You know, platform engineering itself is a very long journey. And in bits and pieces, a lot of us have talked about it in the past, a lot of discussions that are happening as part of the working groups as well. And the entire journey is broken down into different pieces. You know, you have a piece where you have the platform maturity model coming in, you have the assessment coming in at a place, and then you have the whole thing of, do you really need a platform coming in at one place? So in the next nine to 10 minutes, I would be throwing this idea that I had, uh, something that I worked upon based on my discussions with a few people that I work with, with the larger platform engineering uh, you know, working group itself. And I put up this talk. And yeah, I'm, I'm just going to share what I have and probably catch up with some of you after the talk to you know, understand if I'm on the right path or not, and if this is something that we should uh, you know, work on. Uh, quick introduction, I am Atul Priya Sharma. Uh, like I said, some of you would have uh, seen me earlier in the day. I am from Hyderabad, India. I work as a senior developer advocate at InfraCloud Technologies, where I help individuals and organizations adopt open source tools and technologies by means of you know, building POCs, creating content, giving talks like this. So that's part of my job. I am a CNCF ambassador as well and the co-chair of the working group. Outside of work, I am a food and travel blogger. So when I'm not working, not doing community work, you can find me at a restaurant trying out a new cuisine or taking my car and driving to a new destination. Uh, these are my social handles where I share everything from talks to food and so on. Because I'm a food blogger, let's talk food. One of the things that I absolutely love is avocado toast. I'm a vegetarian. This is a purely vegan dish, and I love this a lot. And whenever you plan to make a dish right, you see if you have the right ingredients in place, you have the right recipes in place. So you have an expectation in your head set that, OK, I have my bread, I have the avocado in place, I have tomatoes, I have everything in place, and this is how it should look. But then when you actually start making it, this is how it turns out to be. So expectation versus reality, right? So this is what I relate to even when it comes to are you really ready to adopt a platform, right? Even before you think of adopting a platform, you have something what I call as the readiness illusion. You think that you are ready because of certain factors that you would be seeing around you, and you're like, OK, hey, I have everything, and let's get a platform in place. But then it might turn out like the avocado toast I, that I just made. You know, you had an expectation of building something really swanky, which is really helpful for your developers and your entire organization. But then it turns out to be something exactly opposite. So the readiness illusion, how I term it as, are these three things. The first one being a misconception around having modern tools is not equal to having a platform mindset. So if you think you have the latest tools in every aspect of, you know, you're using the best operators out there that can help you sync all the jobs that you want, all the latest CI, CD tools along with you, that doesn't mean that you have the platform mindset in place. The desire for efficiency is not equal to preparedness for change. You might want to improve, improve your processes, you might want to improve your workflows, but that doesn't mean that you are prepared for that change. It's just that you aspire to be there, but you are not ready to be there. And thirdly, which probably a lot of you, a lot of organizations and teams would relate to, is your technical capability is not equal to organizational readiness. You might have the best of principal architects, solution architects in your team who are ready to give you the best platform that they can build for your organization. But then that's not equal to whether your organization is prepared to adopt that particular platform. So these three misconceptions is what I dub as the readiness illusion. But at some point in time, you need to get from illusion to reality. And there are some focus areas which I'm sure you, know, you would have come across different uh, discussions and different places as well. So organization structure and culture is one of the top most focus area that you should have whenever you are planning to adopt a platform. Your current pain points and inefficiencies is something that you should be aware of completely. You should know what are the bottlenecks in your current workflow, current processes. And you should be very clear of you know, that these are the things that your platform can actually help you with. 
the resource availability and allocation. And by this, I don't mean the technical resource availability, but in person, the human resource availability as well, so that you know, they can help you build the platform that you actually want. And then lastly, you should have a long-term vision and goal for your platform. Don't just do it because others are doing it. If it's going to really help you, that is when you should actually look for building a platform. So are you really ready? You know, these are a few questions. I'm obviously not going to be reading through all of them due to the interest in time. But then you, know, you could have things like, are your teams frequently reinventing the wheel across different departments? You know, do you struggle to maintain consistent compliance across all your software projects? You know, is your current infrastructure scalable enough to handle your projected growth in the next two, three years? Or maybe, you know, do you spend excessive time when you're onboarding new team members? You know, this is a problem with a lot of teams face. You know, the onboarding is quite long. And you know, maybe have you calculated the total cost of ownership for building and maintaining the platform versus the current setup that you have? So these are a bunch of questions that a lot of you, a lot of teams would come across. And these will be your guiding lights to help you decide whether you are ready to really adopt a platform. So based on, like I said, you know, the, dis the discussions that I've had in the group, discussions with people, based on some reading, I prepared, I, it's better to say I gave a first tab at this, the platform readiness checklist. This is a very raw version uh, based on, again, my learnings, which I feel, you know, once I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing with the uh, working group, you know, we can refine it and make it look a lot uh, better. So like I said, this readiness checklist focuses on five key areas. It focuses on the organization alignment, the current uh, state assessment, what your current state of affairs on, in the organization is, your technical readiness and uh, uh, adaptability, the cultural readiness, and ob uh, also the operational readiness. So these are the five focus areas the checklist is built upon. So how do you actually use this checklist? So this is a four point scale. Uh, for every score, you have a state, you have a description. And for th all these focus areas, there are five questions uh, which you go through. And based on your, uh, you know, how, how you are set up with each of those factors, you rank yourself. So for example, this is the organization alignment. So do you have the clear executive sponsorship for platform adoption? Uh, does your strategy align with the overall business goals? Do you have a budget allocated for development and maintenance? Do you have the metrics and KPIs in place? So these are few questions which fall under the organization alignment. Then you move on to the current state assessment. You know, you talk about whether your existing workflows and bottlenecks are documented. Because you, until unless you don't document your flaws, the issues, the inefficiencies that you have, it's not going to really help you when you are actually building your platform. You know? uh, then you talk about the pain points, the current performance metrics, you know, the lead times, the deployment frequency, your turnaround time for a bug. Are these all documented or not? The resource utilization, dependencies, et cetera. Uh, from a technical point of view, uh, can your current infrastructure actually support a platform approach? The tools that you're using, the workflows that you have, can a platform actually support that? Is your technical debt at a manageable level? The security and compliance requirements are well defined, and whether technical documentation and standards are in place. And then you have the cultural readiness. You know, are the teams willingness, uh, willing to adopt to the new ways of working? Is there a collaboration practice established between the different teams that are part of your organization? Are there roles and responsibilities clearly defined? And is there a resistance management strategy in place? Because you know humans are resistant to change. And suddenly, if you ask your entire organization to use a platform, there would be some resistance from a certain group. So do you have a plan for that as well? And obviously, the last one, which was the operational readiness. So do you follow the CICD practices? Are monitoring and observability in place? The self-service capabilities are identified you know, based on how your developers use, what are the things are, or the tools that should be supported as a self-service model. So, you know, if they want a container, can they request it? If they want to integrate monitoring, can they request it as a self-service? So you need to clearly identify what self-service capabilities are. And then based on how you rate them from one to four, you actually calculate, add up all of them, and these are the scores here. So if you score anything above 85, you are highly ready, you are well positioned for adopting a platform, you have a strong foundation that is present across all the five areas. If you are under 84 and between 70, you are moderately ready. You are ready to begin with a careful 
uh, planning. There are some gaps that exist, but you can certainly manage those gaps. If you are below 70, you know, you are not quite there yet. There is limited readiness. Uh, you need significant preparedness for uh, building the uh, for, for building the capability that is required for the platform, and if you are below 50, you are not absolutely ready to take it. So this entire checklist is what uh, I wanted to share with all of you, and this is a very initial raw version, like I said earlier, based on my learnings, my understanding. Uh, this will point you to the GitHub repo where you can find a PDF version of this. And please feel free to go through it. And if you think that there are something which is glaring off target and it's not supposed to be here, you know, I would be more than happy to discuss, improvise, improve it. And uh, yeah, this could be a part of the working group discussions as well. So if you're part of the working group, we can see how we can drive this, if this is required, if this is repetitive. So we can definitely uh, you know, build upon it. And once you have the readiness checklist in place, let's assume you did your readiness checklist, you are ready to adopt a platform. What next? And like I said, the platform journey itself is built with multiple parts. So once you are ready to adopt a platform, the platform maturity model will come in, which will help you to decide where exactly you are in your platform adoption journey, how you mature to different stages, and then we come back to the platform uh, assessment checklist, which is a work in progress from the working group, which will tell you where exactly you are and what you need to go to the uh, entire last stage. So that's pretty much uh, 10 minutes. I think I just shot over by a minute, but that's the idea that I wanted to share with all of you. Uh, we can connect on these uh, social channels or even in person, I'm around. This QR code will take you to my shared profile where you can download this deck. So in case you missed out any QR code or any slide, the deck is here. Please feel free to download it and use it for your reference. Thank you so much for being a wonderful audience.